that medical diagnosis. That is why in question, when you say any question, you first of all figure out the medical diagnosis because there are two types of questions. The question that comes with signs and symptoms and without a medical diagnosis, it's now left for you to figure out the medical diagnosis. This one is a tricky one because you might just, you know, not actually know the medical diagnosis, but thank God for our examiner that most questions come with medical diagnosis. So there are other questions, the second type of question comes with a medical diagnosis without signs and symptoms. So that is why you have to know your medicine and surgery as in your message pronounce that for you you will now figure out the signs and symptoms by yourself so in question number one we have mr lacon a 45 years old casual alcohol user was brought to the medical emergency unit of the hospital with the history of loss of appetite yellowish skin itching and fatigue on examination, a diagnosis of liver cirrhosis is made. In this question, they gave us signs and symptoms and also gave us medical diagnosis. That is why I like nursing counsel. They know they know the stress person. We have another question. A 48 years old Mr. Bala is admitted into the medical ward with the medical diagnosis of congestive cardiac failure. In this question, they do not give us signs and symptoms. So it's left for you to figure out the signs and symptoms by yourself because signs and symptoms is needed in formation of nursing diagnosis, which is the first component of this nursing care plan. So number one, you have to know your medical, medical diagnosis. So after knowing your medical diagnosis, nothing I need to do is the tie to the tie to that is uh let's use uh the number one question mr lacon is 45 years old with liver cirrhosis you now write nursing care plan of mr lacon with liver cirrhosis in capital letter that is the tie to and when drawing your line there are some people that, you know, the, the examination sheets is just like this. You used to have inner cover, out, the, outer, the outer page and the inner page. So, it, uh, it doesn't mean that you, the first question, if the first, if the first question is nursing care plan, it doesn't mean that you, you must write it in the first sheets. So, the... The most convenient one is you open to the to that second page with double space. You if you if you like there are enough sheets, they can even give you extra sheet because you paid for it. You now open into the main the center one and use see in fact use all of them to draw, draw it neatly. And the caption, the nursing diagnosis, the nursing objective, nursing action, scientific rationale and evaluation. Write all of them in capital letter. After, after you've written your title, like nursing care plan of Mr. Mr. Lincoln with liver cirrhosis. So you write the components of this nursing care plan in capital letter. And make sure you draw your table very neat and don't right in the margin you know give and space because you go speak all your own english with there for your mouth give and space and all space this book no money jam no money jam so that is another another way another way because your the organization the neatness of your work matters and you know nursing care plan nine marks you are fighting for nine marks Nursing tutors are very stingy with math, so you have to, you know, bribe them with your work, the neatness, the organization, and the, you know, concise and precise. No, they speak too much English. Go straight to the point. Hit the nail on the head, you know. I prefer using medical terms because it's kind of short. Imagine me. Now, if I want to write anemia, 
and I begin to write um, blood loss. Now, too, at the waste book, now too much English. I go just write anemia. So far as the person that is marking it is a nurse, and he go understand what in the talk. So I prefer using medical terminology because it's kind of shorter for me. So that is it. The title we talk about first is know your find out the medical diagnosis by understanding the question number two you organize you find out the title you write the title you draw your table well you organize it very well call it chaminaya so after that you prioritize your signs and symptoms so still on the question we are using so Mr. Lekon, okay, let's not read it. Let us read the signs and symptoms. There is loss of appetite, there is yellowish skin, there is itching, and there is fatigue. So, if I want to prioritize it, prioritization means the one, the one that needs urgent attention will be treated first. So, in, in, in a case where there is obstruction of the airway and there is anxiety, you know, go feel leave the most severe one, which is the obstruction of the airway, and begin to treat anxiety first. And another thing that I remember is if they give you scenario like this one, that they give you the signs and symptoms, they give you what to use information of the nursing diagnosis. No go do over sabi because you don't cram pain, you don't cram uh, malnutrition and all that. You can't they write another thing. May they not say you sabi. It's not done yet. It's just like in, in, in a situation whereby you can do this one is if your brain is blank and instead of leaving your book blank, anything will come for your head. Drum. But if you actually know it hmm, and they give you the scenario, you understand it or you understood it, Please follow the scenario they gave you. Loss of appetite, itching, everything. Use it and form the diagnosis. No go pick another diagnosis where you don't cram. Come from exam. Come, come from exam. Because you don't cram, and you won't write down. It's not possible. The FPT you give you some mark. But instead of you leaving your book blank, those are where you cram, I beg, write them more. So, this question, we have loss of appetite, we have itching, we have fatigue and we have yellowish skin so in this place now someone that has liver cirrhosis yellowish skin is the severe one because the jaundice jaundice comes with a lot of skin it's a danger sign so yellowish skin is our first signs and symptoms that we are going to treat here and the second one now we have is loss of appetite Loss of appetite, malnutrition, you know, and the other one is itching, discomfort before you now come to fatigue. Fatigue, you can actually sit down, eh? but you know, you cannot bear it. Number one, you know, from the question, we now prioritize it, you know, it's you prioritize your signs and symptoms, and after prioritization, you will now form your nursing diagnosis. So, ever come be dozy. Information of nursing diagnosis. There are some guidelines. There are some things you are you are meant to do and things you are not meant to do. So, in nursing diagnosis, you do not write nursing diagnosis uh, as per need. In the aspect of need, the patient needs. No, you write nursing diagnosis in aspect of response. The patient response. The incorrect one is need for fluid, which is incorrect, very, very incorrect. Why in, in the aspect of response, which is the correct one, is deficit fluid volume related to nausea and vomiting evident by skin to go. So that is the human response. Related factor, you know, relate your nursing diagnosis to a medical diagnosis, maybe Hypertemia related to pharyngitis or your work is not done that way. So it's related to the pathophysiology of that, that medical diagnosis or any environmental factor, any causative organism, but not the main 
medical diagnosis like hypertemia related to pharyngitis which is incorrect it's very very incorrect but the correct one is hypertemia related to alteration or changes in the thermoregulatory center of the hypothalamus that is the, phar the pharyngitis which is the inflammation of the pharynx infection go straight to the hypothalamus alters the thermoregulatory center if, if we go to that banner hmm? so that is it evidence it's now be evident by the thermometry reading of 40 degrees Celsius or anyone you get you don't relate it to the medical diagnosis itself you know what I go? Mm. so another one is you do not use due to to relate something to relate nothing diagnosis but you use related to it's just the norm maybe hypertemia due to alteration in the you know thermoregulatory center in the hypothalamus it's incorrect the correct one is hypertemia related to alteration so that is it and the other one is avoid tautology that's there are people that that used to you know join two medical diagnoses together in on exam it's a network if we two nursing diagnosis age and form different diagnosis you join here to one a wiggy and they pity you so there are some people that used to write uh, uh, anxiety related to fear of the unknown anxiety is a nursing diagnosis of its own why fear is another diagnosis you have two nursing diagnosis sharp sharp avoid tautology it's not acceptable and another one is prioritization of signs and symptoms it's very very important if we need the person that is having this near if possibly attend it to you are now solving maybe all fear fear kicheta the first one you got a booze right affair it's not acceptable. I ask him, I ask him, I ask him, I ask him, I ask you are a mother, you are going to kill your patients, one of the nurse. That is how people feel. These are the few guidelines for writing nursing diagnosis, which I can remember. If you have another one, you can add your own. So, this nursing diagnosis is very, very broad. There are four types of nursing diagnosis we have the actual diagnosis we have the risk nursing diagnosis we have the possible nursing diagnosis and we have the syndrome nursing diagnosis i don't go explain them because i don't do this this thing i don't explain how to form it but because of the nursing the make candidate that is why i'm just recapping it so that you people will understand it go to my youtube channel and watch more about it because i explained it so well yeah i'm just you know cutting off some gist important gist so we have components of components or features of nursing diagnosis we have the definition we have the label we have the related factor and we have the characteristics the actual diagnosis, I'm, I'm going to explain the actual risk diagnosis. Actual diagnosis, it have all the whole four characteristics. Actual means there is presence of signs and symptoms. Now for the signs and symptoms, it has the label, it has the definition, it has the related factor. And most importantly, it has the characteristics, which is the signs and symptoms. The risk diagnosis has only theory without signs and symptoms because on maybe the patient is at risk of having this you know this diagnosis example hmm? risk for infection related to intravenous line or catheterization the patient you know on catheterization if care is not taken the patient might have infection so there is no signs and symptoms but in actual diagnosis there is presence of signs and symptoms in one evidence which is the characteristics either see indeed there is alteration there is changes in uh, thermoregulatory center which now leads to the high temperature so definition means human response 
Example, nutrition, fluid volume. The label means it's an adjective that explains or describes the definition. The definition is the focus of the diagnosis. So, example, the definition is nutrition, why the label is imbalance. Imbalance nutrition. There is nutrition, then the label now describes how the nutrition is, if it's balanced or not balanced. But in this aspect now, it's imbalance. Imbalance nutrition more than body requirements or less than body requirements. So that's it. We have related factor. Related factor is the causative organism, mm? the cause, which is derived from the pathophysiology or environmental factor. So the characteristics, the almighty characteristics is now the signs and symptoms presented by the patient. So having known all this, we are now ready to form a nursing diagnosis with the signs and symptoms we've prioritized. So no tell me say you don't understand everything I don't teach. So if I'm forming this thing, keep your head where you may understand.